president of the Hurlingham Club. We've been here now at Blenheim Palace for eight years and it's an absolute pleasure and an honour as always for us to be here. Um, today is Concord Judging Day. It's our IC Jag Judging Day. Our Concord is now regard one of the Peninsula Classics best of the best events. So we have an incredible lineup for you here today, an incredible judges, many of whom were over in Pebble Beach judging there last week. Um, it's 75 years of Ferrari, very special year for Ferrari, so you can see some incredible cars in front of you from 365P, the 250 GTO, the 250 short wheelbase, uh, hot rod, 275 competition, some incredible cars on there. Um, before I go on and introduce the supercars, I'd like to say thank you to our great, great friend and patron, the Duke of Marlborough and his family for always allowing us to come here every year. As I say, it's an absolute privilege for Andrew and I and for the rest of the team. Um, thank you also to our sponsors, to Aviva, to Boodles, to Pomeray, to Lockton, and welcoming our new sponsors here today from New York Boeing Business Jets. Um, in front of you, we have a selection of wonderful luxury brands, left and right of the lawn, some of the best classic car specialists in the world today as well, and of course, the manufacturers. So a lot of the manufacturers, as they do every year, they come to Salon Privé following their global launches at Pebble Beach and Quail, and they launch to the UK and to the European market. So this is the moment where we put the spotlight on the supercars, and I introduce you to them and tell you a little bit more about the guys and the cars that we have on display here today. And nobody is watching me. So I'll start with the first one. The first car to come through now is Dallara, the Dallara Stradale, which is here with their UK partner and importer, Joe Macari Performance Cars. Now the Dallara is quite a piece of kit. 855 kilograms, 400 brake horsepower. It's built by an Italian business, Delara, who are automotive manufacturers themselves, but tend to put their names to uh, components underneath the skin as opposed to on top. This is the first time Delara have actually produced a car with their own brand name on it. Harry, please finish. Harry, I'm going to introduce you and tell us a little bit about the Delara Stradale. I think you've introduced it very well. It's it's a track-focused road car. Um, the lightweight spirit of the car really comes alive on country roads as well. Um, I had the pleasure of driving at Silverstone not too long ago, and on road tyres, as we drove up there in the morning from, from home, um, we are keeping up with GT4 cars on slicks with professional racing drivers. So it's quite impressive for, for what is a road car on road tyres. Put it on slicks and it would really come alive. Um, and then country roads is just an absolute joy. So you can basically have it in, in three formats, can't you? Covered, open, vaquetta, and then also the, the, the race screens as well, I think. Yeah, so uh, you got it there. Exactly, bang on. And uh, when it's covered, the doors also pop off really easily. It just leaves a T-bar down the middle. Uh, they come off in about a minute. Um, leave those at home so you get the best of both worlds as well. And given the power and weight, 0 to 60, 3.25 seconds and on to, I'm sure, well over 150, 160 miles an hour, but I don't think it's actually the top speed that's crucial here. It's the actual experience and getting there, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, Jean-Pierre Delara sort of just always wanted his own road car. Obviously, he started in the early days designing the Mura. Um, that was his first road car, and then went on to, to start Delara, the, the well-renowned race car manufacturer. But they've also been a good supplier to many people. Bugatti, um, over the years, they've made the bodywork in the tubs. The MC12 was by them and numerous others, um, and, and he always wanted to make his own road car, and he, he got frustrated with how heavy cars were getting, so it was really, lightweight was, was the real ethos behind us, that was the, the massive push, um, and he achieved that with just 850 kilos, and that was always his dream to, to have his name on the front of a lightweight sports car. I think he succeeded, didn't he? Thanks very much, Harry. Thank you. Better introduce this one before it starts because you won't hear me. This is the Day Tomasa P72. You'll remember Day Tomasa from the 70s with the Mangusta, the 80s, the Pantera. This is the P72, which effectively pays homage to the Day Tomasa P60, the racing car of the 60s. Um, beautifully, beautifully designed. This is 
This is a piece of art. Um, 700 brake horsepower. It follows the same pattern as the as the early um, the early Datamasters did in terms of its powertrain. V8, 5 litre, Roush, 700 brake horsepower. It's not just the power though, it's the driving, it's the experience, it's, uh, it's just a beautiful piece of kit, isn't it, Jake? Yeah, it's absolutely, uh, it's amazing. It's, it's really been uh, a key piece of the brand revival. Uh, the car was launched in 2019 and now we're back after a few years of COVID. Uh, we've been doing some development. We've got a new facility at the Nürburgring in Germany. That's where we're testing and validating all the cars. Um, and we're very, very close to production now. And just producing only 72, I think? 72 models, yes, correct. And you're here with Joe Macari Performance Cars with your UK partner, aren't you? Absolutely, yep. Yeah. Fantastic. I'm gonna let you fire it up, guys. I'll, uh, I'll be quiet as you do, so. The beautiful data mass of P72. Next up, there is no segment to that this car falls into. This is the, the Engler Super Quad. From Victor Engler in Slovakia. This is essentially, believe it or not, a motorbike. So you actually don't need to wear a helmet if you don't want to. But it has a 5.2 litre V10 Audi engine in it with 1,100 brake horsepower. Can you speak through the helmet? How are you doing? Yeah, very well, thank you. It's definitely something different. Um, I'm not quite sure there's a vehicle like it here, to be honest, but uh, it's very, very fun to drive and definitely different to anything I've driven previously, for sure. I think it's probably different to anything anybody has ever driven, George, isn't it? It's uh, the Engler, the, the, the Super Quad made its global debut here today. Victor was with us three years ago, just before COVID hit, uh, and he introduced the prototype there. But this is now the finished product, and this is available now in detuned version. It comes with just 650 brake horsepower. But if that's not enough, then as I say, you can have it with a full 1100. Thanks, George. I'd definitely be wearing a helmet if I was on it, that's for sure. That was something a little different. The Alpine A110S. Um, I love this car. Alpine are with us every single year, with us at Salon Privé London, with us here at Salon Privé Blenheim. Um, traces its, uh, its, its heritage, its NDA, NDNA, back to, back to the, the rally winning giant of the 70s. This car won the Monte Carlo Rally in 71 and 73, where it came first, second, and third. It beat every car. It went on to become world rally champion. This car follows the similar ethos, lightweight, rear mid-engine, 1.8 liter engine, but this has 300 brake horsepower. So it gives it a 0 to 60 in 4.2 seconds and onto a top speed of 171. And Zeb, this car is a particularly special one, isn't it? I'll save the bit for you till last. It is indeed, so we're delighted to announce that this car will be the feature vehicle in the new Bond series books which we launch tomorrow, Double or Nothing, um, and the A1S will be the feature vehicle in the, in the novel and the series, so we're delighted to have Alpine in such a glamorous and well-reputed story. Brilliant, and on the stand you've got at the moment the, the GT, this is the S, you've got the GT, and the other one you have there? It's the A110, so we've got each of the three models that we have available in our range, we've got the A110, which is 252 horsepower and starts from 14, uh, just over 49,000 pounds. And we have the GT and the S, which both have the same 300 horsepower powertrain, same as this one here. So we have. Okay, thanks, Seb. I don't think pound for pound you're going to get a better, more exhilarating sports car than this. Thanks, Seb. The A110S from Alpine. <laughs> Next up from McLaren, the Artura. This represents, this is the next generation hybrid supercar from McLaren. Nick, would you like to say a few words, please? 
Hi David, yeah this is uh, the new McLaren Artura, uh, it's available now, if you were to order uh, you'd be able to get one in quarter one, quarter two. Uh, it's a next generation supercar, so uh, it has the core McLaren DNA, carbon fibre um, uh, monocoque, you've got a, a V8, wonderful, um, sorry, V6 engine with a, a fantastic exhaust note, uh, and yeah it's everything you'd expect from McLaren, superb handling, great drive experience uh, and you get this wonderful complimentary electric engine that just gives it a, a very different experience. So in terms of performance it's 60 in just over I think three seconds isn't it? Absolutely yeah it's still you know, it's an all-out supercar uh, but with incredible uh, handling and, and, and comfort actually for everyday driving. Yeah fantastic thank you very much Nick thank you. Next up from our dear friends Ferrari. Now this is a 296 GTB. Similarly to the McLaren, this is a three liter V6 twin turbo hybrid. Now this year is the 75th anniversary of Ferrari. So if you, when I've finished, not too soon, if you go down to the Ferrari stand, you will see the car on the stand there, the classic car there, which is the 1947 125S. Now that car, these two together, mark 75 years of evolution for Ferrari. That one has the 1.5 litre V12, this one has the 3 litre V6 with an electric engine which gives it approximately 830 brake horsepower. 0 to 60 comes up in under 3 seconds, about 2.9 seconds and it will go on to well over 200 miles an hour. Now Adrian has some information about the car that he hasn't wanted to share to me because he thought I knew everything about it but I will pass the mic to you Adrian. Please tell us away. Morning, David. You've definitely pinched all my lines already. Uh, so, good morning, everybody. Um, yeah, no, we're very pleased to have the 296 GTB here. Uh, now, when Ferrari originally designed this car, it was all about redefining the ethos of fun to drive behind the wheel. Um, and effectively, having spent a bit of time behind the wheel of it now, they've absolutely nailed it. Um, part of that fun is uh, really about the, the sound of the car. It's got an incredible V6 engine, a really high revving motor, um, to the point where the engineers nicknamed it the Piccolo V12 when they when they launched the car, um, because it's such a sweet sounding engine. So um, this particular car is uh, has the um, optional Assetto Fiorano pack, um, and is finished in a, a, a livery of Azzurro Dino with the Giano Modena uh, livery, uh, which is inspired by one of the iconic 250 GTOs uh, that raced back in the 1960s with uh, the Swedish colours in, uh, hence the numbers that we've, that we've put on the side. So, yeah, no, we're, we're thrilled with it. I'd also understand you've got the, the tailor-made Roma, haven't you? We have. Uh, we've got the, the, the Grigio Nardo tailor-made Roma, so that's well worth a close look at on the stand as well. So, uh, yeah, no, we'll be delighted to welcome people over later. Thank you very much. Thanks, Adrian. Thank you, Lucy. <laughs> Next up, from Aston Martin, the DBX 707. This is the fastest, sorry, the most powerful SUV currently in production. 707, meaning 707 PS, which translates to just under 700 brake horsepower. Um, 0 to 60 comes up in 3.9 seconds. It goes on to just under 200 miles an hour, featuring a 4-litre V8 twin-turbo engine. This is the incredible Aston Martin DBX 707. Justin, how are you? Absolutely, let me give you a bite. Hi everyone, uh, so um, we are offering test drives today, if you'd like to have a go in one of these, we've come over to the stand, um, you can actually have a go, we've got one uh, with one of our performance driving instructors, you can have a go out on the road, uh, trust me it's worth it, so enjoy. Also on the stand you have Valhalla don't you, so Valhalla is, 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 is regarded as son of Valkyrie and Valhalla uses the same 4 litre V8 twin turbo but with an electric engine. 937 brake horsepower. I should have a top trumps car in there still. You know it all. Why, 270 mile an hour is in top speed, two and, two and a half seconds to 60, I think. So, and it's the first time that the car has the interior has been unveiled to the public, isn't it? So, you can come over and have a look, uh, see what the interior looks like. Um, we did that over in the States recent weeks, but it's the first time in the UK that you'll be able to see it. Yeah, fantastic. Great to see you, Justin. Thank you. Next now um, from a 
four litre V8 twin turbo to full, a fully electric car. This is the, the first fully electric uh, luxury SUV, the GV60, which was launched to the UK at Salon Brevet London earlier on this year. Um, beautiful, beautiful technology. Uh, this is face, uh, face entry recognition, fingertip uh, controls, fingertip recognition. Power ranging from three, 319 brake horse up to 429. Um, Gen Genesis are here with the, the GV60, the GV70 and the GV80 as well. Um, all of which are on the stand. And also there are cars available for test drive here as well. Um, if you'd like to test drive one of these, please do go and see the, the team at Gen Genesis. And uh, they'll be happy, I'm sure, to assist if they can. Thank you. As usual, I present polar opposites from the Genesis GV60 to the beautifully insane Hennessy Venom F5. Now, my brother and I were in Pebble Beach last week, where Cole and his brother Ryan and father John Hennessy launched the Venom F5 Roadster to the world. Um, the Venice, Ven Hennessy Venom F5, John, I can't hear over the engine. So this basically, this is a truly American supercar, 6.6 .6 litre twin turbo V8, 1,817 brake horsepower. John basically is one of America's greatest tuners. Uh, he's been in the business for 30 years now tuning everything for, uh, through Dodges, through Fords, etc. American brand cars, but a few years back, John took a Lotus Exige, chopped it in half, took the 1.8 litre engine out of it, put a seven litre V8 in, and created the incredible original Hennessy Venom. This is the first car that he has got on to design himself with the boys. Um, over on the stand, the red car you'll see is the, Ven uh, the Hennessy Venom F5 Roadster. That is making its European debut here today. All these cars, the coupes, have now been sold. I think just 24 of the roadsters are being built, am I right? 30. 30. 30. Yes, that's correct. 20, 24 of the coupes. Yes. How does it feel to be over in Salon Prive after Pebble last week? Good. We're glad to be here. We're a little jet lagged, but we're glad to see everyone here. And wearing the trademark Stetsons, huh? Yes, of course, with the Hennessy branding. Yeah, representing Texas proudly, I'm sure. Yes, sir. Good to see you guys. Take care. Performance on this car is pretty academic with 1,800 brake horsepower. It will hit 60 in about two and a half seconds and go on to... In fact, the Venom F5 Roadster is engineered to do 311 miles an hour. Uh, the Venom GT that I mentioned previously had the world record for the highest top speed, which was 256 miles an hour. The new one, as I say, is engineered to be the fastest roadster in the world at 311 miles an hour. Now, Luke, welcome Luke Sutton from Clive Sutton Performance Cars. These guys have been in business for many, many, many years now. One of the UK's most prestigious uh, performance sports car dealers. Um, importing American cars and for the last few years Clive, Luke and the team have been uprating, upgrading the Mustang that you see here. I don't think that Ford actually bring the GT, import the GT500 in and this is basically what the guys have provided for the people that want a bit more power in the Mustang. This is the Clive Sutton Mustang CS850R, 850 standing for 850 brake horsepower. But Luke, tell us a little bit about the performance and a bit more detail about the car. Thanks for the introduction. So as you said, it's 850 brake horsepower, um, 665 torque um, 0 to 60 in three and a half seconds now the in America they have an example called the GT 500 which as you said was never brought to the UK so we build these on right hand drive UK supplied Mustang and we essentially upgrade and we work completely everything so Apart from the power, uh, we've got a full GT500 body kit, which is carbon fibre absolutely everywhere. So the um, bonnet, the front fenders, um, all of the skirting around, including the rear skirting and rear spoiler, all full carbon fibre replacement. Um, huge amount of work's gone into the suspension so that it can handle the power. 
um, and then also we've gone to town on the interior so absolutely everything in here is trimmed in leather and Alcantara um, and we've essentially made the Mustang into a supercar. And you succeeded, it's an exquisite car Luke. And I know what, I know what you want to do now, yeah. <laughs> As long as you don't take my carpet with you. Now coming up, we have another car new to Salon Privé. This is the Nardone 928. You may have seen this earlier on in the year at, at Goodwood, but this is Thierry Nardone. And Thierry basically had a passion for 928s. And over the years, he decided to make his own resto mod version of the 928. Here it is, lower, wider, modernized. Thierry, tell everybody about the car. What you see is actually just a model. We will start the construction in uh, September. But yes, this is um, a reinterpretation of the 928 based on the 928S4. Um, so yeah. <laughs> Brilliant, thank you very much, Terry. Beautiful 9 to 8. So Terry has basically shortened the front end by 4 centimetres to create a beautiful overhang at the back of the car. It's also widened by 6 centimetres, so 3 centimetres either side to give it a lower, more purposeful, more aggressive stance. Um, it is beautifully built, 5 litre V8, 400 brake horsepower, but it's not about the, the acceleration or the top speed. It was always built as a beautiful GT, and this is exactly what it is. I think Thierry is the first person that's taken the 928 and create, created a rest of mod of the 928, where everybody else is doing the 911. So well done, Thierry. Thank you. So basically we had, there are more cars on the lawn that haven't driven, some that can't, the PHEV Range Rover, the new Range Rover that's just been launched. Um, there's cars there also from Bugatti, from Deus Automobile as well, who are making their debut here. Um, somewhere behind you, I think, if you turn around, ladies and gentlemen, you'll see the McMurtry, which, for those of you that went to Goodwood, you will have seen Max Chilton smash, he didn't just break it, Max smashed the hill record. Um, in the McMurty. So the guys are just behind you there. 